It's now my pleasure, we're going to pivot here um, and introduce our morning keynote, uh, Frank O'Brien Bernini from Owens Corning. So what I want to do uh, is, is talk with you a little bit about what we're doing at Owens Corning uh, in this area of sustainability and, and in particular in energy efficiency, both in our operations and in the markets that we serve. We uh, have three big sections of our, our, of our company. Our insulation business, which plays very big in the energy efficiency space for sure. Uh, but, but our composites business, you know, one of the largest uh, composite applications in the world right now is, uh, is wind power, and we're the largest supplier for the reinforcements that come up in the winter. So, as a center, we talk a little bit about uh, renewables. We're, we're very pro renewable, both for our own operations uh, and also in our, in our markets. And then the third area is, uh, is roofing. And that's actually the largest composite application in the world right now is because of the glass reinforcements that go into the roofing products. Now, we grew up in Ohio, so this is our home. Um, our headquarters is, is in Toledo, Ohio. Our largest R&D center in the world is in Granville, Ohio. The uh, uh, first product that, that we launched was uh, a furnace filter product, and it was uh, developed by this combination of Owens, Illinois, and Corning Glass, uh, because at the time of the prohibition, uh, everyone was trying to figure out what to do with all this excess glass capacity uh, because we were needing it for, for bottles. So, out of need comes innovation, and I think we're seeing that right now in the energy space with a need to innovate, and uh, that has a very big focus for, for our company. So when we think about sustainability, uh, I mean, this is a paraphrased um, sentence that we took from, from the UN back in the, in the 80s. We think it is still very relevant uh, that what we're trying to do is operate our company today. Are many of you familiar with ICEF? It's an organization which you probably know of series, uh, which is uh, an organization that's been very active in this space for, for many, many years. Well, almost morning just signed on uh, last, last week to the climate declaration, which basically says that um, we're going to get much more proactive in this space than we have been. Uh, and we've been pretty active in the sort of action space here, but not so much in the advocacy space. Uh, but to, to get a price put on carbon, uh, we think that that's really critical to uh, uh, making progress in this area and to, to lining up the economics to make the correct decisions be made uh, out in the world. Because right now, uh, I mean, they, they, the way that I like to think about this is, uh, you know, how, how different would we be thinking about uh, you know, the opportunity to improve energy efficiency in buildings and in cars and sort of all across in our, in our industry if, as you were driving down the road, every mile you had to throw out a pound of CO2 and it just landed on the side of the road and it was kind of like there forever, like, you know, like a, a bag throughout throughout the window. There's uh, I've already kind of talked about this, but there's the, the big mega trends that, that we think we can impact are you know climate, energy, uh, consumer consumption in a lot of markets we operate. We have a four point sustainability strategy and I'll talk a little bit about uh, each one of these uh, but could go sort of deeper into the energy side of it. The, the first part is operation sustainability and that's really footprint reduction of our manufacturing operations. So that's where all our energy efficiency programs happen, uh, as well as if we have a fairly large greenhouse gas impact that's unrelated to energy, which is an unusual kind of situation for a company. And that's because of a lot of refrigerants that we use inside our manufacturing operation. Second area is all around product and supply chain. We are working really hard. Uh, we've got a commitment for 2020 to have 50% of the miles driven uh, inbound and outbound from our manufacturing operations uh, transported by, by natural gas and both CNG and LNG. And that uh, um, is bringing economic advantage, uh, but uh, more importantly for our sustainability strategy is it's bringing a 20 to 23 percent reduction in greenhouse gas when we're using LNG, a little bit more when we're using uh, CNG. We do a lot of collaboration with builders, architects, OEMs, like auto automotive OEMs, for improving the energy efficiency of commercial buildings like this, improving the energy efficiency of homes. Okay, so look, and the fourth area is all around safety, uh, uh, community vitality. We're, we're 
Um, we have a commitment to, uh, in the communities in which we operate, so hopefully if there's anybody here from Newark or Mount Vernon or Medina, Ohio, uh, or Granville or Toledo, <coughs> you, will, you will see um, and, and, and we would cooperate that the Ellis Corner is, is trying to be a very good uh, community neighbor um, and our quicker production and reducing the emissions from, from our operations is a part of that, but also our work with United Way and Homemade and um, the, uh, a lot of uh, local organizations, Habitat, is all part of our uh, focus, our sustainability focus on the community. Our first 10 year goals we set off in 2002, this is our footprint goals, we set off a 2002 baseline. So we've been at this for a little while. They just, our first 10 year goals just sunset at the end of 2012. And we just recently reported this progress against those goals. So you see the goals are <coughs> column on the left, and these are intensity goals. So you can think about these, uh, although we have a very diverse product portfolio, you can think about this as, as energy per unit of product production. Uh, and so, so those were our goals, very, very aggressive goals. And you can see what we reported, progress against those, those goals. Well, we changed in our second set because what we saw was an opportunity to do more fuel switching that would have a bigger impact environmentally on the world uh, through on-site generation, renewables. We wanted to take advantage in our metrics so it would drive actions in our company. We wanted to figure out, could we just use one chunk of coal at our facility and get the same impact rather than going through the uh, um, existing sort of network. So these are general projects on the left that I, that I categorize that way because I think they're probably generally applicable to most manufacturing operations. And then some specific ones that are quite uh, related to the kinds of processes that we do. We have a, an entire pipeline of projects. It goes from you know six months payback all the way to seven years or so. And these lighting, daylighting projects always tend to be better than a year payback, often seven, eight months payback. Uh, our Ohio work has largely been focused on energy efficiency improvements in manufacturing and this uh, uh, natural gas to diesel, or diesel and natural gas conversion, which the economics pencil. So if you've got dedicated fleets that are uh, kind of working in loops around your manufacturing operations, uh, the, the numbers are working in Ohio uh, right now and working in a number of states. One of the ways that, that we found really impactful in this is this whole idea of fan printing, which is almost like the opposite of footprinting. So in, instead of being sort of focused on doing less bad, it's like, how do you measure doing more good? So if it takes X amount of energy to produce you know, a, a, a pound of insulation or the insulation needed to, to insulate a house, how much insulation is that? Or how much energy is that insulation saving over the life of its use? And how does that compare? And as a result of that, if anyone were to look and say, do we, do we want more insulation production or do we want less? Do we want more of Owens Corning or do we want less of Owens Corning? You would conclude because of that balance, because of the footprint compared to the handprint, that you would want dramatically more insulation. Um, because to, to give you a few numbers here, uh, we do this thing called environmental product declarations, which are transparent um, communications of the marketplace of the environmental aspects of our, of our products. And so if you go on, on our website, you'll see an EPD for our insulation products. And on the last page of that, you get to see the in-use impact. And if you kind of like do the math there, the math is laid out, you see that if you take the energy that it takes to, uh, to insulate a 2,400 square foot house in Chicago. Um, you pick a couple different climates, but we'll pick the Chicago one. Uh, and so, 2,400 square foot house, you insulate it to code. What you would find is that energy that it took to insulate that with our uh, eco touch fiberglass insulation, you could take that and put it in the gas tank and drive across the country. The environmental product declarations, with their product category rules, how you use a 60 year life for a building, it's probably modest because most buildings last longer than that. You take that 60 year life, the energy saved from that insulation in that building, you could drive to the moon and back five times. What we have used, which has been really helpful for us, is uh, Dow Jones Sustainability Index is free consulting. 
So you, you go and you look at the hundreds of questions that, that are asked. Uh, same, same thing with if you're, anybody uses one report, which has all the questions from a whole bunch of these folks that, that care about sustainability. It really informs what people who are very deep in a particular area care about. Um, and, uh, and so we've used those mechanisms to inform what people care about. And then we look and say, can we make something like that work inside our company?